this morning's call to worship. God is in our midst, forming us to be God's own people. Though the way may be difficult, God will be with us. We will not fear. In the Lord, we will take our refuge, for God is our strength. Come to the Lord, who will surround you with God's own righteousness. Lord, open our hearts and our spirits so that we may be faithfully able to follow you. Amen. Father, you are the name above every name. Your name is like a fortified tower in which we may find safety and security. When we feel troubled, we will find peace in your name. When we feel weak, we will find strength in your name. When we feel overwhelmed, we will find rest in your name. When we feel surrounded by pressures on every side, we find stability in your name. Lord, your name is beautiful. Help us to rely on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hello church family. I wanted to just offer some encouragement as I went on a walk today and was here at this stream. Psalm 46 says this, God is our refuge and strength. He's an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Be still and know that he is God. He will be exalted among the nations. He will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us and the God of Jacob is our fortress. Lord, we thank you for this day. As we come together, we come in unity as a church, as a people of God. Lord, I ask right now that as we come together, this scripture in Psalm 46 
would land upon our hearts, our minds, our lives. Lord, that we could listen to these words that you've laid on my heart to share this morning with your people. I ask that the words that I share, the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, and they fall on ears that need to hear. Lord, let the words that I say not come from Kevin, but fall on you and bring us encouragement today. In Jesus' name, amen. A friend of mine <clears throat> awoke one morning to find a puddle of water in the middle of his king-size bed. In order to fix the puncture, he rolled the heavy mattress outdoors and filled it with more water so he could locate the leak more easily. The enormous bag of water was impossible to control and he began rolling it on a hilly terrain. He tried to hold it back, but it headed downhill and landed in a clump of bushes which poked it full of holes. Disgusted, my friend threw away that waterbed frame and moved a standard bed into his room. The next morning, he awoke to find a puddle of water in the middle of his new bed. The upstairs bathroom had a leaky drain. I wasn't supposed to be sharing a message today. We had a guest preacher lined up this Sunday weeks ago. But due to circumstances, things changed. There is no other place I would rather be than sharing what God has laid upon my heart to share with you, with you this morning. So a sale adjustment happened. Remember, we cannot direct the way the wind blows, but we can adjust our sails. Sail adjustments are important in life. Probably more important than the adjustment is to realize when we need to make them. Last week, I was not planning on being in the lodge cooking turkey dinners with some from our church for the local community. Well, we did, and it was good ministry all around. 25 meals were delivered last Sunday afternoon to some folks to our community, not so much in need, but they were delivered in love, simply as a Sunday dinner delivery. Sale adjustments. The only thing we can be certain about is that things change. Our response, reaction to the change and the challenge is important. Sometimes, and perspective, we need a little more perspective, a reminder to see the problem and identify the solution, the way out. Well, today's verses, some of my most favorite in scripture, offer perspective. These verses are sweet reminders on what we can do and who we should be focusing on in times of trouble as we lift our eyes to the hills. I love how these verses begin. God says, even though the trouble Five powerful words start offering a foundation for life. God is our refuge and strength. And this is where I would like to park today, taking some time to unpack these words together, to see that upstairs leaky drain and fix it before it causes damage to other areas of our lives. We need to rest in the deep-rooted promise that God is our refuge and strength. It's not just in this chapter that we read these bold statements. We see truths in other places in the Bible. Listen to these words. Psalm 91, 2. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Psalm 27, 5. For in the day of trouble, God will conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent, he will hide me. He will lift me up upon a rock. Proverbs 18, 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. Psalm 18, 2. The Lord is my rock 
and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. God is our refuge and fortress in whom we trust. In the day of trouble, God conceals us in his tabernacle. God's name is a strong tower. We are safe when we run to it. God is our shield, our stronghold. It has been said that we may not know what the future will bring, but we know who holds the future, and that's the Lord. Our faith is important in times of challenge. Our faith offers hope for tomorrow. As we look to the future with hope, my hope is for each of us to clearly see and truly remember that God is our refuge and strength. I would like to unpack the importance of that word refuge. Then pose the question and the reminder, where do we get our strength? Then zone in on those words in verse 10 of Psalm 46, to be still. Maybe some of us are done being still. This past week has been too still. But what does stillness really mean? First, God is your refuge. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. These verses in Psalm 46 begin with a statement, a strong statement. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Always present, always there. God knows the end of the story and is there amidst our troubles, our anxieties, the unknown. Troubles happen. And we are reminded not to fear Though the earth give way and the mountains fall, waters roar, mountains quake. I hope many of you had the opportunity this week, this Tuesday morning, to get outside after this beautiful spring snowfall, looking at the trees covered with fresh fallen snow, looking at the mountains covered with white. As the sun rose after the snowstorm, blue skies. The contrast of the colors were beautiful. The outdoors were so peaceful. Creation changes, weather changes. God is ever present. God is our refuge. Refuge is the condition of being safe or sheltered from the pursuit, danger, or trouble. Something that provides shelter. To take refuge is finding that place of safety. Refuge comes from the French word to flee. A refuge is a place to flee in order to shield ourselves from unsafe places, trouble. The Orthodox Jewish Bible speaks this verse in this way. Elohim is our refuge and strength a very present help in Zoros. Elohim is the Hebrew word for God, the God, the living God. God shelters us from Zoros, trouble. This word Zoros in the Hebrew means narrow or confined, being trapped in the vice of life. We may have felt narrow or confined by the happenings around us, perhaps squeezed a little bit more. The question is, when God is our refuge, how will we respond to Zoros? The squeeze of trials. When God is our refuge, a shelter in the storm, we still go through the storm, but we are protected Our faith reminds us God is ever-present. God makes things good. Romans 8.28 And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. When we trust in God being our refuge, as we run to him in times of trouble, may God be your strength. 
Secondly, I'd like to ask the question, where do you get your strength? Well, as a kid, I loved watching superheroes on TV and reading comics. Clark Kent would race into the phone booth and become Superman in the wake of trouble. Bruce Banner, played by Lou Ferrigno, would get mad in trouble and his muscles would tear his clothes. Even Popeye, the average sailor, would see trouble and reach for his spinach can, pop it open, and have super strength, reminding us to eat our spinach. <laughs> These superheroes would see trouble and react, pulling upon their superpowers. Well, God is our strength, our superpower, ever present in trouble. Are these just Sunday morning words? Or do we remember them and live them out in our lives? I ask that question as I'm perplexed by the challenges of today, allowing the fears of tomorrow to grip us so. This week I heard of a New England church closing and several camps canceling their summer programs three months from now. Perhaps this is the end of a season for these ministries. And my hope is they will find new ways to do ministry. During these uncertain times, we must not rely on our own strength. Pastor Henry Warden Beecher once said, The strength of a man consists in finding out the way in which God is going and going in that way too. Our strength should come from God, as God is our strength each new day. The encouragement and evidence of strength of God is seen many times in Scripture. Our strength comes when we find the way God is going and go that way also. And we do this when we lift our eyes to the hills and recognize our help comes from God, as Psalm 121 reminds. Nehemiah 8.10 reminds us, do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Isaiah 41.10 reminds us, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am the Lord your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Exodus 15.2, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. 1 Chronicles 16.11, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. There is power of hope in these verses. Words of assurance when we look for where we get our strength, we find the answer. Anxiety does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows, but only empties today of its strength, as Charles Spurgeon reminds us. Lastly, I'd like to explore the question, what does it mean to be still? Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging, Selah. It goes on in verse 10 to say, Be still and know that I am God. Selah. That word Selah appears three times in Psalm 46. Once at the end of verse 3 and verse 7 and in verse 11. Well, what does it mean? Selah is a word used 74 times in the Hebrew Bible, 71 times in Psalm, and three times in the book of Habakkuk. The meaning of the word is not known, although some biblical scholars offer definition. Some say Selah may mean forever, as it does in some places in the liturgy of Scripture. Another interpretation claims Selah comes from the primary Hebrew root word selah, which means to hang or by implications to measure as 
way of weight. Because some psalmist psalms were sung accompanied by musical instruments, 31 chapters have the caption to the director of music, including the word Selah. Selah may indicate a break in song, and some believe, as myself, it means to pause and think of that. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Selah. Pause and think of that. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. Pause and think of that. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted on the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. Pause and think of that. Being still and knowing that he is God is not quarantine. Being still is not narrow. It's not squeeze. Being still isn't doing nothing. Being still is an action word. Being still means to put your hands down. Sometimes we put our hands up to defend ourselves from all that life can bring our way. Try to muster the strength and face the challenges with our own strength. Stillness is about calming down and knowing. It is a release. May we be still when we are in the woods or quietly reading a book. Being still shows a soul at rest. My prayer this week, during this gift of extra time, is to find still small moments to wait quietly before the Lord, not lifting our hands in defense, but being able to release the anxieties of today and trusting in God as our refuge, our strength, and an ever-present help in trouble. Selah. Pause and think of that. Father God, we thank you for the words that you have laid on my heart this morning. I ask that you'd work them in our minds, in our hearts, in our lives. God, that you'd remind us the importance of being still. It's not about mustering up our own strength to face challenges with our own strength. It's about relying on you and your strength. You are ever present in our lives. Lord, we give you thanks today. Be with us, calm our anxieties. Lord, replace them with calmness in you. Lord, as we come together as a church in unity together, I ask that we would be a light, a continued light in this community and the world around. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
and for the benediction. It comes from Lamentations 3, 22 and 24. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I wait for him. As you go about your week, remember that God loves you and is with you. Go in peace.